Welcome to the Navigating Digital Payments podcast, brought to you by Worldline, bringing you the latest innovations, trends, and predictions about the future of payments. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Navigating Digital Payments podcast. I'm David Daly. I look after the Worldline Scientific Community, and I'm delighted that today we've got another bonus episode for you where we're talking to the fintech GSES. And this is kind of a teaser for our next standard episode where we are going to be talking about the topic of do payments need to become greener? So the question for today's podcast is, can data drive sustainability? And I am delighted to have with us Oriane Weiser, who is a project manager at GSES. Oriane, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me. Hi, Ina. Um, yeah, so I'm Oren Weiser, like you said. I work for GSES for over a year now, and I'll talk more about what GSES is in a second. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm also delighted to be here. Fantastic. Really great to have you joining us. And, and as you mentioned, we've also got Ina Kostiuk with us, who is the Global Partner Manager for the Merchant Services part of the Worldline business. Ina, great to have you here again. Hello, everybody. It's always a pleasure to, jo- to join the episode. So I thought, first of all, today, it would be good to find out a little bit more about what GSES are doing and and why. Um, Then, Ina, great to hear from you about what else is happening in in the payments market around sustainability. And then, of course, I'll I'll be coming back to you, Oriane, to find out your views about what the future trends are going to be around sustainability in payments and and maybe also more broadly as as well. Um, So... Perhaps we can can make a start just by asking you about what um, what's the mission that you have at GSES and and what are you guys focused on at the moment? All right, so GSES stands for Global Sustainable Enterprise System. It was founded in 2019 by Kelly Ryhook, um, and it's yeah, it's a fintech. It's still a startup. We're scaling up at the moment, and it started with the ambition to rate companies but have verified ratings such as ESG rating that we often hear about environmental, social and governance criteria. And basically Kelly wanted to have a holistic, to create a holistic platform for um, companies but also for their suppliers to be able to verify and rate the entire supply chain of companies um, and our consumers and our um our client at the moment on the platform can be SMEs. They can be, we haven't targeted a specific size of companies for the reason that we believe that any company, any startup can start, have a sustainability performance um, rating system and can be verified and can have their sustainability stake and goals from the get-go. They don't have to wait to be a big corporation and have big emissions and they should start mitigating now. Um, So yeah, that is our ambition. And now we've extended to have a solution also for, um, for buyers. So for buyers to be able to see the environmental footprint of the products they're buying. So we've extended the platform not only to rate companies on the organizational level, but also on the product and projects level. Uh, Can you please elaborate more on the business model you're using? Because so far, a lot of companies uh, working with such sustainability and data was uh, mainly NGOs or some consulting company also trying to get in that space and have a separate division helping, advising uh, for the best measurements, the best action to take to be more sustainable. What is your position in it? So basically, yes, you're right. The world of ESG rating is a very popular one. It's it's trendier than ever to do greenwashing, unfortunately. So to fight that, um, we have third-party accreditation with verification agencies, certification institutes, standards. We have more than 550 eco labels integrated on our platform for our uh, clients to be able to be rated by according to those standards and certifications. Um, yeah, so to try to ensure this transparency that it's protected, you have to have this third party accreditation verification, which we're the only ones to make possible for such a low price at the moment. 
It would be interesting, Ariane, you mentioned the term greenwashing, which might not be familiar to all of our listeners. Can you can you say a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, yeah. So greenwashing is the word that we use when a company usually just uses sustainability performance as a marketing tool. And often, as a project manager, I often have to talk to people who are from the sustainability department of big corporations. And often when these are not big corporations, guess where the sustainability department is? It's under the market sector. It's under marketing. So it's it's just, it's a very harsh reality that it is a way for companies to attract more consumers and to sell more products and services. And there were three things you touched on in your first answer, which I thought were quite interesting. So the first is clearly about measuring the environmental impact of products or services and and making and publishing that, I suppose, so that people can make informed choices. The second is about kind of making sure that they are certain it's it's a reliable measure because of course anyone could put a label on a product and say oh it's 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 sustainable but I guess what you're trying to do is make sure that there's actually something behind that that is that can be proven and the third thing I thought was interesting is is doing it at a maybe a price point but also at a kind of in a way that means small businesses can use it as well as large businesses so it's I guess the way you're pricing it or structuring it makes it more accessible to any company to 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 do those three things is that right yeah to come back on your first point we do rate uh, environmental impacts and and performances but ESG is also about social and governance so we are also very prone on that and especially for the context of this podcast, I think we also focus a lot on the finances side of it and the market side of it. So it's not just environment, um, which is often comes comes out to be the, the, the most uh, precious point. And maybe perhaps you could say a little bit more about that as well, because I think um, I've seen that all the time when we've had discussions around sustainability, is that often sustainability gets used as a word that's interchangeable with perhaps like in our world, green IT or green payments and, and an environmental friendly aspect. But sustainability is, of course, as you say, much wider. Do you want to just say a, a little bit more about kind of what, what broader sustainability means? Yeah, I mean, sustainability, the concept of sustainable development as a whole is what they teach you at school, basically, that it is the ability to use the resources that we have today without undermining the future generations to use these resources. So sustainability is not only let's protect the environment, it's also let's let's grow as a society together, let's let's share, let's be more equal to ensure that everyone has access to those resources in the present as well as in the future fantastic um so Ina if I if I now come to you I remember when we were working on the navigating digital payments report um one of the challenges if you like for us was that sustainability just seemed to cut through everything you know you you couldn't really put sustainability into one box or say it only impacted one area it seemed every topic we were looking at there was a sustainability component to it um so Ida, do you want to share a few insights uh, about your view of what's happening in sustainability in in the wider payments uh, space uh, absolutely and uh, probably i would need to highlight that uh, sustainability uh, it's actually a global issue and a global challenge and we see it as, as a multidisciplinary problem and um it turned out that the sustainability development goals are really in the scope of one of the priority on the global agenda. And uh, when you look uh, on the 2030 agenda on the global levels, and there are like clearly uh, action and priority across different functions, how to tackle it in terms of finance, technology, trading, uh, uh, building capacity, infrastructure. What Oriana was saying that it's about the sharing common common goods to to make the best for everybody. Uh, so this is all. It's really fascinating to hear, and we've had a good, I think, introduction to what you're doing at GSES. I'm I'm interested to perhaps hear a little bit more about what um 
what you've been working on more recently and and perhaps some of the results or the experiences that you've uh, that you've had from that all right um so mo- most recently we opened our e-commerce branch um so basically we have been wanting for a long time kelly has been wanting for a long time to open up to consumers and to also solve issues for con- consumers such as information reliable information um and so she decided to partner with um, an American company in the U.S. Uh, it's called Blue Planet Alliance. Their founder is Hank Rogers. And he wanted to also solve the problem of unreliable information. So he was thrilled when he discovered GSES, decided to partner with us and to open an e-commerce branch. And what he did is he covered the design part. So to kind of attract consumers to it, we decided to, uh, BPA, Blue Planet Alliance, I decided to create this Blue Planet design that we could use as a rating system, just like the star rating system, but with Blue Planets. If you have five Blue Planets, then your score is 100%. If you have only one planet, then you should try to gather more planets. Um, and so we're using this design for the e-commerce evaluation for consumers to know from the get-go. For them, it's easy. And then they can play also with the criteria. So if for them, what they want is if it's an efficient price, but also efficient in terms of that it's not completely undermining the planet, then they can just select those products. So it's a very intuitive and interactive tool um, for consumers to use and for e-commerce platforms to display. In really simple terms, then, I guess everyone is used to on e-commerce sites seeing uh, ratings for products that are usually based on reviews from other people that have bought the products or people who subscribe to podcasts are used to seeing ratings. You know, this, this is quite quite normal. But the idea here is that you have a similar rating displayed, but that is telling you how sustainable the product is. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And one thing that I'm I'm very aware that um, is a challenge in, in the payments industry is understanding the sustainability of of something, taking into account the full kind of supply chain and and getting the holistic picture, because it's very rare that a company is building everything from raw materials themselves. So how how do you approach that in terms of giving a reliable rating for a product when it, it probably involves many different suppliers throughout the supply chain? That's a very good question. And it would have been hard if we hadn't tackled that problem first. If we were now and didn't have the rating system for a supply chain would be a little bit in a pickle. But thank goodness Kelly has prepared the terrain. And in 2019, when she started at GSES, actually started with this ambition. It wasn't going to just stop as one at one company rating system. It was going to do the entire supply chain. And this is why we attract a lot of big corporations, because big corporations need to track their sustainable performances across the supply chain. Wow. So you're, so you're, you're really building up a, a data set of ratings for not just the end consumer facing product, but actually all the, if we call them products in the supply chain that make up those products and, and in order to give a reliable overall rating. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's it's quite that's, amazing now. So it's been really fascinating, Ariane, to hear both why GSES set out on this mission and also some of the how you've been doing it and and what your most recent adventures have been. Um, I do just want to finish off by asking you about how you see the future. So are there any trends emerging now that you think are going to become really key in the uh, the next few years? Well, like I was saying, digital purchase and e-payments and just e-commerce in general. I was reading uh, uh, World Economic Forum uh, brief of last year, and they were talking about how e-commerce, digital, just digital purchase and payments even were mentioned as the next big thing. Um, Also, lots of technology such as like cryptocurrency and all of that was also mentioned. But from my side of things, I definitely see digital purchase as becoming the thing everyone it's funny because I feel like two years back I would have never admitted that I purchased a lot of things on Amazon or e-commerce but then today post-covid or like not post-covid but it's very much in covid still 
Um, we are not, I mean, I don't, I don't lie about using Amazon or any other e-commerce um, platform because it's kind of how we do things now. And you can see that their value and their stock market for e-commerce platforms just like skyrocketed since COVID. So it's definitely the next trend, if not the current trend. And I think it's really, if I reflect on some of the things we've been looking at in the scientific community, it's really, firstly, it's interesting as a consumer, it's difficult to know, actually. I have no idea whether when I go to a, a local shop in town um, or if I buy something from Amazon, I have no idea which is the more sustainable option once you factor in the delivery and the packaging. And because there's delivery and packaging in both, there's my trip into town, I, I just... I, I don't know. Um, but also I think, so we've also been looking a little bit at those, the kind of, we called it global in, in the report. So the rise of kind of global platforms, but enabling more local commerce. So you might find something via a, a global platform, but you might then actually be sourcing it much more locally uh, as, as a way of, of driving kind of more sustainability. Or more recently, we were talking about re-commerce so again increasing the the reuse of goods so it's, it's kind of I, I suppose a new word for the second hand market but again perhaps that can be scaled up or or made easier uh, by digital technology so I think it's it definitely feels as you say like I mean e-commerce has risen massively over the years and Covid definitely had a sudden impact where people who weren't say buying their grocery shopping online were suddenly doing that even if they never had before in in, the, in their lives and i think now the interesting thing as you say is how does that how do we continue along that path but also make sure that we don't destroy local communities um or or move to a model that's really unsustainable or or really unenvironmentally friendly i think it's it's a good point you make what is the ambition of DSES? Like, would you like to become a worldwide global data platform? Do you want to tackle that the little startup enterprise starts with you? Or what is your ambition you want to bring into the world? Our biggest ambition is to turn the ESG rating market into a reliable ESG rating market so that the benchmark is not unverified data. Thank you, Oriane. It's been really, I think we've covered a lot of ground there, not just understanding about sustainability rating, but also understanding how you're achieving it, some of the future trends around e-commerce, um, and also some of the results that you've seen in, in the market. So, Oriana, I really want to thank you so much for joining us for this discussion. It's been a real pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. And Ina, of course, great to have you with us as well. Really appreciated your input. Pleasure shared. So if I can just mention the next standard episode, uh, which is a related topic, I think. We're covering the question, do payments need to become greener? Uh, I just want to remind our listeners that if you want to get in touch with us, give us any feedback, propose topics for future episodes, you can email in on ndp-podcast at worldline.com. Please do also take a moment to subscribe and rate our podcast. That would be much appreciated. And finally, as always, thank you to you, the listener, for joining us as we navigate digital payments. Thank you for listening to the Navigating Digital Payments podcast, brought to you by Worldline. Join us next time to learn more about the latest innovations, trends and predictions for the future of payments.